good news for the Bengals. They've gotten back Jesse Bates. He didn't sign a long-term deal before the July 15 deadline for franchise tag players to do so. There was reporting that he wasn't going to play under the franchise tag, and that's fine. That happens all the time. Then you realize, I'm not going to let $12.9 million go away and never come back. Right. I'm not going to sit out the year. I'm not right. going to pull a Le'Veon Bell. I gain nothing from that. Here's Jesse Bates talking about why he hasn't been able to get a long-term deal, and we'll talk a little bit about what comes next for him as this season unfolds. Have a listen. I don't know. I, I don't think that's my question to answer. <laughs> um, I think uh, it's, a, it's a great opportunity for me to um, continue to present what I'm about, who I am, um, to this franchise and other teams as well. So, um, like I said, I'm looking at this as an opportunity to – Prove that I'm one of the best safeties in this league, and um, I'm not sure why I'm not paid yet. But uh, this is, like I said, this is a great opportunity for me to create some wealth for my family. Um, you know, it's not a bad number at all. This franchise tag number isn't bad, uh, so I'm not going to be naive to that. Um, so, like I said, I'm blessed. Um, I'm happy to be here. He's just got to wait a year to get paid, and the reality is it's not going to happen in Cincinnati. They've already drafted his replacement. The franchise tag for 2023 would be $15.48 million. The Bengals don't do it. The Bengals never apply a tag a second time. At most, they'll let the guy play under the tag for a year, and then he's gone, and that's what he's going to be. He's going to be gone. Every week this year, he is auditioning for his next stop, for his payday, and we said this the other day. At least he wasn't a first-round pick. So they only tied him up five years, yeah, and then right. he hits the market, and he will be a highly compensated, unrestricted free agent next year because the Bengals already know they can't pay everyone. The moment they took Dax Hill is the moment they acknowledged to the world, we can't pay Jesse Bates. We got to save our money for Joe Burrow and Jamar Chase. Yeah, that, that's exactly right. It, that's the balancing act of the NFL. You know, they spent money on the offensive line and some resources there this year to make sure that's better so they can protect Joe Burrow and, and give some holes to Joe Mixon. You're right. They got things coming down the pipe here that you go, whoa, they gotta, they're going to have to dish out some major money. And, you know, I think all in all, I, I think we discussed this earlier this week a little bit just with, with him. Yeah, it does him no good. You're right to sit out. No, he said it right. He's got to present himself, you know, best to the Bengals. Maybe if that happens, doubtful, but to the rest of the NFL to show like, hey, you know, last year he was viewed as a little bit of a down year, you know, you know, for his standards. He was kind of in that pantheon of best safeties in football. He came on in the playoffs, and I think he's a phenomenal football player. He's very versatile. I just think speaking to this year and this year's Bengals team with him there, it it, it does. I I mean, it, they're they're going to be dangerous in the secondary. We know their pass rush is pretty good. And then when you look at their schedule, and you go, oh wait, there's some teams like the Cowboys. They're going to have to play right. And then you know, Saints, and they got the Chiefs on the schedule. The Bucks at some point. The Bills. You know, the versatility of having him, Von Bill, Von Bell, Daxton Hill, Mike Hilton, Shadobi Awuze. Eli Apple to match up when, hey, it's third and 12, and now we're going to play dime defense, right? And we're going to have, you know, six DBs on the field. Uh, they're they're going to be able to match up about against any group in football. And I think that's the big thing I look at to go, wait, that's great Jesse Bates is back. Because when they do have to play that high-octane offense, maybe the Chargers in the playoffs or somebody like that, they're not going to have a hard time figuring out who covers who or, oh, no, we're undermanned in the secondary. And, and of course, it gives them depth, too, if there's, you know, the injury or two that happens during the season. I remember when we both kind of first discovered him watching back games a few years ago. Right. Like Kamikaze. Watch the Bengals defense, and this guy comes flying out of right. nowhere. Right. Every other play. Yeah. It's like, who, who's, number, who's number 30? Wait a minute. This guy's pretty good. And – Teams are going to see that on film. They experience it in person. There's going to be a lot of tampering going on. There's going to be there's going to be a lot of winking and nodding. Yeah, well, he's one on of those, those post game right. handshakes. Right. I think it already started yesterday with Sean McVay. <laughs> they may, maybe that's why he came back this week. Get a, get a little chance to show the Rams what I can do. The f them picks go out and spend money on veteran players. L.A. Rams. Good timing by Jesse Bates to be there in time 
for practices with Sean McVay and company. Yeah, but you're right. That that's these are the type of guys where it, it does seem like the writing's on the wall, and this is his last year there. You know, barring maybe some crazy injury to somebody, and that, that, this is the guy that you're right. There's going to be teams that you know, the head coach, you know, he shakes Zach Taylor's hand, and he's they're going to oh wait, let me go find number thirty, and just hey, you're a hell of a guy. Hey, you know, best of luck, and you know, maybe we'll talk to you after the year's over. You know, that Belichick was always a king of doing that. There's a lot of coaches that, you know, have an agenda when the game's over of maybe some guys they want to see or before the game, even in pregame warmups, just to let them know, man, I think you're a good player. Wink, wink, like you're talking about, you know, and good luck today. And that's certainly something that goes on in the NFL. It's part of the game, and hey, it's cool with me. It's, it's all good. Another reason for Jesse Bates to aspire to get to the Pro Bowl as well if they still have one this year. Great opportunity to yeah. sidle up to coaches right. and players and just make sure everybody knows. Maximize the market. Got to maximize the market. That's the thing. We know it now. And the, it would be so out of character for the Bengals to sign him to a long-term deal after the season. They still don't guarantee money beyond the first year. That's ultimately why they weren't able to work out a contract with him because I already have guaranteed money for the first year under the franchise tag. Well, I'm going to sign a long-term deal that doesn't give me any guarantees beyond this year. I have my guarantees this year either way. I'll stick with the option that puts me on the market. So we all know, all teams know, this guy's available. Pay attention to him. Get your ducks in a row. Build your budget accordingly, and you can make a play for Jesse Bates when March rolls around. Hi, I'm Mike Tirico, and thanks for watching. Make sure to hit subscribe for the latest news and highlights from NBC Sports.